Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about tooth alignment and what are the pros and cons to that. A lot of us, when we go to visit the dentist, we hear from the dentist, uh, you know, sometimes they'll say, you know, you really should have your teeth straightened or you have some things happening that you could really benefit from straighter teeth. So if you've ever wondered what your dentist really means by that and why, I'm here to talk about that today. So the first thing that your dentist is looking at when they look in your mouth, so we do a complete exam, we're looking at a lot of things of course, but one of the first things that we see is the actual, the arch form or the arch shape, okay? So the arch just shapes the shape of our jaws, the upper teeth in their, arc, their row of uh, alignment and the lower arch. We have to look at, is that arch shape uh, a nice U shape? Is it a V shape? Is it an omega shape? And sometimes it's even a square shape. That's actually pretty common as well. And then do the upper shape match with the lower shape? So what we're looking for is a nice U shape, almost like a, a nice arc. And if we see that, then we know probably the patient's gonna be a little bit healthier than if they have some of the other shapes like the omega, the square, and the V shape. As soon as we identify the arch shape, now we're looking at the angles of the teeth. So the angulation of the teeth within that shape, often with a V shape, we'll also see sort of tipped in. And we call that, dentists call that the buccal lingual inclination. So that incline of the angles of the teeth. We really wanna see teeth that are more upright within a nice round U-shaped arch form. So when we're not seeing that happen, a lot of times dentists will see another thing that's going on in the mouth. Uh, and we'll see wear on the teeth, we may see more recession, and a lot of times patients will complain of sensitivity. Another thing that patients will not even realize that's connected with some of these problems is they will um, be asked, of course, if I'm doing the exam, I will also ask about how they sleep, uh, what kind of airway issues they may have. We're looking at, um, you know, history of allergies, asthma, because often the mouth and the body will develop at a young age because of environmental factors. So if, if we're very young and we're starting to breathe through our mouths, for example, uh, that is not the natural way humans should breathe, but what has to happen is the body has to adapt to that abnormal breathing pattern. And a lot of times the tongue, in order for the mouth to stay open in order to get the air through the mouth, the mouth is open and letting air in, but then the, the upper jaw collapses. So you get this collapsing in of the upper jaw. And so now we end up with a very V shape uh, or even sometimes omega shape uh, arch forms that really aren't, um, they're not very pretty. We end up patients are complaining about the aesthetics but also they're going to have a lot of long-term damage to their teeth. When we see the teeth that are uh, angled in and we know the patient has some sort of airway issue, it can be sleep breathing disorders, it can be uh, you know, mouth breathing during the day, a lot of other signs, like I said, will line up. So a lot of redness in the gum tissue, a little notching at the gum line. That's another term we use uh, called an abfraction lesion. We may see, um, you know, again, a lot of sensitivity in the teeth. And so what we wanna do with the, often in most cases, everything with orthodontically can now be treated with what we call clear aligners. Uh, I use Invisalign, it is the most, for me, the ama most amazing product out there. But what we'll do is we'll slowly, gradually expand back the arch forms and give them that nice round shape. And also we will upright the teeth. So the arch form becomes you, the uprighting of the teeth is uh, more straight, and then the arch width. So the w wideness of the palate and the width space that the tongue has uh, is going to be much better for breathing. And then it's gonna put a lot less stress on the teeth. So if that is something that you know, you've been suggested to get done, a lot of patients in the past have been recommended that they wear a Brux guard, a night guard at night for their grinding. Personally, I, of course, in my, in my career, I've prescribed many Brux guards, but often a Brux guard is just a Band-Aid and it's not really addressing the main issues uh, that we can do using uh, Invisalign as a, as a way to give back the natural forms that our mouth should have in it, you know, if you had not been exposed to these environmental factors. So hopefully that explains that a little bit more. 
The way Invisalign works is that the plastic will push on the teeth and sometimes we can actually control root tip and torque or we can actually do that in the teeth as well. So we get everything lined up with the plastic trays. The plastic trays are a series of them. Everybody's different. So depending on what your doctor has prescribed or um, designed for you or where the goals are and what stage you're at when you start Invisalign, how crowded or how much spacing is there, it's going to really impact how many aligners you're going to have. And depending on your, again, your dentist and what types of techniques they use, the aligners can be changed anywhere from every five days all the way up to, uh, it used to be a certainly every 14 days, but very commonly a lot of dentists will change, have their patients change their aligners every seven to 10 days. So we generally will start patients off every 10 days, but if they've had what we call Propel, which is a to uh, an acceleration system that we use on our patients, we can have our patients change every five days, up to five days. So it's really great, and so if you have that event or something coming up that you need to move the teeth even faster, we can do that. As dentists, we also have the ability to place these little, you sometimes see people wearing Invisalign, you'll see a little bump on the plastic aligner, and it is really meant to act as a handle. So if you think about uh, if you're trying to turn a wheel, the, a ship's wheel, for example, if the ship's wheel during a stormy uh, weather was just a circular wheel, your hands could slip off of it. But by putting the little handles, the little spokes that come out off of the wheel, the captain has a lot more control over the torque and with less force for, for the steering. So we, we apply these little buttons, these little attachments, they're tooth colored in most cases and they just pop right off at the end of your treatment. That, uh, those little handles are designed specifically, every single handle is a custom design for each tooth for a specific movement. So sometimes we will, we will have a tooth, uh, an attachment, what we call an attachment on the tooth that uh, will just move the tooth, rotate it, or it may bring it out. And so it's all very different. So what you see on someone may not be the case for you and vice versa. I like to not put attachments right on the very front teeth if we can help it. And we certainly will do as little as possible, but it really helps with treatment and it really makes it better. Um, the trays themselves are made of a very, uh, strong plastic however it's not meant to be worn you know for much longer than a couple of weeks and also a lot of patients will sometimes be have to be a little bit careful about what they eat generally if you're taking your liners out to eat you're fine but the odd patient has eaten with their liners in and you know certain stain causing foods like curries and mustards and things like that can really stain them the great thing about it though is usually you have another liner you can go into or you can go back to the old aligner if you need to in order to uh, until you can get your next one so it's really uh, not that difficult and certainly people who are doing a lot of talking and they don't want to, everybody to know they're in aligners they'll use they'll choose them as a line for that this is what your dentist has in front of them when they're planning your case they have a digital uh, view from every angle upper lower side views and from the very front and what you see here, and you may not notice it, but you see this tooth is kind of kicked out. So I feel like it's sticking out a little bit. And the same thing goes here. My teeth, when I originally um, began, were the central teeth were very tipped back and the side teeth were always very out. So when I didn't wear my retainer, it typically likes to go back to where it was. So these teeth start to kick out again. So that's what's starting to happen. And what I need to do is bring these central teeth back out a little bit and then bring these in. Now you can see here that I show that I have these what we call the little attachments that I was talking about and that helps anchor the trays and it also helps in some case turn the teeth. Uh, I did not put any attachments on the very front. I may regret that <laughs> but I certainly want, I know that the plastic for very minor movements, you don't need a lot of attachments. So we're going to uh, see what we can do for um, without in this case. But sometimes you will see them on the very front. Now they don't look like this where they're in the mouth. They look very clear and they match your own tooth color. So we try to make sure that they are the same color as your teeth and you barely see them. So when we look at the uh, transformation from the front and we play the little video, so there's a little play button down here you start to see the changes that happen and we're slowly sort of straightening things out. Now we're not uh, really seeing a massive change here because my teeth were not that crowded to begin with. But if you look here again now, so if we look up at the top and we kind of go back, 
and you see, and I can kind of jump ahead, you see the difference that I'm creating. So I'm creating a little bit more overjet. I have what's called a class two, which is not corrected. And in some cases it has to be done uh, with surgery and other things. But in this case, I'm okay with a little bit of overjet, overbite, and, but I don't, I do not want the crowding. So I'm correcting that. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm rounding out the arch form a little bit. So you can see here, we go from this to this. So if you can kind of see the subtlety here, where we're really, on, and some people it's very dramatic, so we'll really kind of take an arch that's sort of collapsed in, and we will, if I play the play button, it starts to kind of open up uh, very easily there. So it starts to create a nice round U shape, just like the arch form that I wanted. And if I had let my teeth completely collapse, I would go back to the sort of square shape that I was. So I am going to put my aligners in right now, because it's day one, it's try one. So I'm just gonna pop them in, you'll see it's pretty easy. First one goes in like that, and then the upper. There we go, kind of just do a little feel around, make sure it fits in there good. Sometimes you just bite down and it kind of snaps it in. Um, one of the things I like to do with my uh, patients is I get them to practice taking them in and out. So we don't send you home not knowing how to take them in and out. Taking them out is always a little bit embarrassing sometimes if, you, if you're around other people, so we usually grab a little tissue and then nobody really minds but generally uh, when we're talking it doesn't affect my speech and it doesn't affect you know kind of what you see so I hope that helped explain a little bit about Invisalign what your dentist means when they tell you that you know you would be you would be best served to have straighter teeth uh, one of the things I say to my patients is you know straight teeth age better and we do see that and we see that people with straight teeth tend to look younger but it's also because they're happier, they have better airways, they function better, and their muscles are more relaxed. When things are very collapsed and very, um, you know, crowded, it's harder to keep good, the keep away the bad bacteria, it's more difficult on muscles, and we tend to look a little bit older. So uh, hopefully that is one more reason to consider having straighter teeth, and that you realize that, you know, if you, if you do it um, with clear liners with Invisalign, it's really not gonna interrupt your life, and you can have a life-changing smile in, you know, six months to a year. So until next time, I will see you soon.